but I will just let you know I have been in recovery from marijuana addiction for 12 years. So grateful. Um, and I've been on this healing path for quite some time. So I do work with people one-on-one, -on -one, um, so many different ways that I help people, but right now currently offering breathwork mentoring. And cold plunge is something that goes hand in hand with breath work. I also have a lot of experience with massage, energy work, sound healing, breastfeeding. I mean, the list goes on, okay? <laughs> So one of the ways that cold plunge really came in and has stirred things up in a good way for me, um, that's really what I want to share about because, you know, we can do all this work on, um, you know, the trauma healing and the mindset work and the belief systems and all of this stuff. And there can be a lot of intellectualizing. So like we understand what we need to do. We understand um, how the past affects us. And that's all up in the mind, right? So cold plunge is like, there is just no escape. You have to come into the body. And so I wanna just give a little, um, kind of like, like I said, the 101, the basics of understanding it. And really we're just talking about the nervous system. So, and at, later I will also drop in the comments a link to a Google doc where I created a checklist that you can kind of use on your own. I also made the, um, what do I call it? The cliff notes, which I made available in the group as well. So that should give you like most of what you need to know, like how to prep. But I want to kind of fill in the fill in the blanks here. That again, you can go through these motions, you could do a cold plunge and be still completely disconnected from um, uh, an outcome that's really going to actually help you. And so I think that's what I'm trying to tune into here also in this group and in this event is that you know, you can show up in sobriety you can show up to meetings you can show up in community um but then there's that so you can do the thing right but then there's that underlying experience that's available the emotional sobriety the um living the life of your dreams right living in that place of freedom for many people a connection with a higher power can be a sticky point because it's new or the higher power from your past is um it's not loving right there's like judgment shame guilt, a lot of stuff from the past. Um, and so this way of befriending your own nervous system gets to be a place where you learn how to self-regulate. So I know for me, co-regulation is such an important part of my own recovery and um, learning to love myself, learning to figure out what my body is capable of. And then the self-regulation comes in, which breath work is a really great way to do that. You know, all the ways that we engage in self-care, that is so a form of self-regulation. So what happens with cold plunge is that this is a way, now I gotta be careful because I don't wanna use the term and analogy of flipping a switch because your nervous system does not work like a switch that can be turned on and off. If you wanna think more of maybe like, oh great, I see you're here, Kaylin. Maybe a little bit more around this idea of like if there was a different channel you were wanting to set your nervous system to rather than off and on. Um, I'm going to keep things pretty basic um, on the call on the live stream here in terms of biology, but there's a lot of great stuff out there. You know, I'm sure many of you have heard of and follow um, the Huberman podcast. He also puts uh, posts up on Instagram, Andrew Huberman. He's great. He, he releases so much stuff about um, the benefits of cold plunge. So I'll, I'll link to that in the comments as well. Um, and shout out if you're on the replay. Hey, we're glad you're here. So when you come into this knowledge of the nervous system of being able to shift, you know, up regulation, down regulation, trying to figure out how to access these states of relaxation, um, both in breathwork and, and cold plunge, there's the idea of sometimes pushing into the sympathetic response to then help your body kind of like switch into the relaxation. So the relaxation parasympathetic response is where all of the mending and the repair and the healing happens. So when you're asleep, that's when the body's really rejuvenating, right? Um, this idea of, again, not like turning on and off, but like having access to the states of relaxation, you know, it can be really tricky, especially when you're stuck in a trauma response, especially when our body is telling us that we're not okay, even though we know that we are okay. So I'm sure some of this can um, uh, sound familiar. 
So one of the ways that I started getting involved with cold plunging was just through spas and then also the hot spring that I used to visit in California. I recently moved to Texas and just jumping into the cold ocean and just knowing, so knowing that on the other side of it, I had this, it was worth it. You know, I had this clearing out, this feeling of an energetic opening in my body. Um, and so when I learned more about how to actually really harness what is possible in the experience, that's where it really changed things for me. So there's this idea I was saying earlier of like, you can stay sober and then, but then like what's right under the surface, right? So I would get in the water and freeze my ass off and feel good afterwards, but I didn't, I wasn't always totally connected to what was actually happening. And so the more that I have the understanding of the physiological responses, the biological responses. It helps me to really use it as a tool and to just be more informed as a way to take care of myself. So switching back to the nervous system. Most people don't want to cold plunge because it's uncomfortable. Okay, you're right on the money. And this is the whole thing around consent. And then also this idea and this you can also translate into like emotional and spiritual, um, you know, consciousness and some other things around this idea of and learning to love yourself. Um, this idea that the problem is also the solution. Okay, the reason that people don't wanna do cold plunge is because it's uncomfortable, but it's actually the discomfort in the experience that gives you the outcome you're looking for, which is again, the relaxation response. An ability to allow your body to become more resilient. I know a lot of us feel like, fuck it. I don't wanna be resilient. I don't wanna deal with bullshit, but can we just also get real here and be realistic that as we move through life, whether we are sober or not, stressors come up, drama comes up, life happens, right? So when we choose to live life on life's terms, the bullshit's gonna come up. And how do you deal with that bullshit? <laughs> so that's where the resilience comes into play and where it can be really helpful to use these tools for Again, self-regulation, self-love, and then also just being able to identify what's in the way. So one of the ways that I actually sometimes really like to go into a plunge is with an inquiry, with a question. On the checklist, I talk about an intention. Most of us know how to bring in intention. You can also use positive affirmations, okay? An affirmation isn't always the same thing as an intention. The inquiry that I like to bring in sometimes is like, you know, hey God, or hey, show me what I need to know about this. Hey, what am I not seeing about this? Because that's all in the mind, right? When you go into the experience of freezing your ass off and getting into the body, all of a sudden answers come to the surface. So I think that's something that's not talked about a lot that I really like to use and that I'm happy to help anybody here. Um, if you're looking to figure out, well, like what is the question that you want to ask? Or if you need help developing an intention, um, that's something that I have a lot of experience with helping people both in aromatherapy treatments and body work, and then also yoga and meditation. So going in, setting the intention of the inquiry, and then being completely present. So I also want to slide in here what not to do, okay? <laughs> If you're in your ego and you're in like, oh yeah, it's going to be so great and I'm going to, and you're just like really super focused on the outcome, you've already missed the experience for presence and for the experience of deep healing. Now, that's not to say that you, that you're going to fuck it up or do it wrong. You're not going to hurt yourself by going into cold water and coming out on the other side. And with that said... This is the reminder that the experience is a controlled environment. So especially for people who are recovering from trauma, hi, I'm one of those people. Um, the idea of discomfort and creating an experience where I'm going to have maybe even painful sensations, physical sensations, painful emotional um, memories come up. You know, that's where, again, you get to take your power back because this is an environment of your own choosing. This is a controlled environment that you have created for yourself. And if you are working with a mentor or a partner, this is somebody that you trust. Otherwise, that's not the right person to be working with, okay? <laughs> Other rant soapbox um, topic. So you're coming into a deep resonance for moving forward, for meeting yourself. And I'm saying that because I think sometimes that gets skipped over and it's like, you know, in the seeking of taking our power back, we just start to feel more powerless or more out of control. And that's not what this is. So even if you're going into the plunge and you end up screaming or crying or weeping or, you know, some really weird shit comes up and out, you get to let that happen. And, with, and when you're with somebody who can hold space for that, it can be really helpful. Um, 
you know, if you're in a people pleasing or um, kind of performative um, activity with cold plunging, like you're already missing the point. I've seen people, you know, go in and say like, oh, I'm doing, oh, this is just so great. You know, it's like, it's not another, this is not another opening and chance to bypass what's real for you. And sometimes if nothing comes up, that's also okay. You know, like this isn't always about having some big grand emotional response. This is about saying, hey, I'm willing to listen to my body. So back to kind of what to expect. There are these physiological responses there. There, You're basically activating the fight or flight response in your body and then waiting for things to shift. So there's always a point when you're in the cold where there's a shift. If there isn't that point, then maybe you got out too early, maybe you don't have the right person supporting you, maybe you weren't tuned into your intention or your breathing or whatever it is. But the idea is that you're in there, um, part of this process is that you let the body shift. Because what happens is when the body shifts, all of a sudden, oh, I'm okay. Oh, it's not so bad. And that really does happen. Um, and then when you get out, there's like even more that happens and it feels amazing. And that's where your body's hormones start to kick in. That's where you get to have increased circulation, especially if you're um, dealing with an injury, there can be this increased circulation that can really help. So I think oftentimes when we have injuries, we think like, oh, I need to, you know, if you hurt your wrist, oh, I need to put my wrist into ice. I need to put ice onto my wrist. But what happens is when you go into a cold plunge, full body cold plunge, um, not too comfortable in sitting in my bathtub right now, but it works. Um, when you have the full body experience, this is where everything gets on board and you actually are signaling to your body for that, for the rest and repair response in that parasympathetic shift. Okay. Not switch shift. So, um, what have I left out? Uh, we'll put the checklist down there. Actually, let me, I'll take a quick look at it. Um, oh yeah, the breathing. So here's another thing where it's like, I can give you the suggestion and I can give you the template, but the most important thing is that you are connecting with your body in a way that works for you. So generally what is suggested is that rather than doing a hyperventilating type breathing, like, <sighs> because that is what actually drives more of the fight or flight response is that you actually start to communicate with your body through the style of breathing in and out through the nose. So when you start to slow the breath, that sends these signals. So see, it's a feedback loop of what you're actually intending to have the experience of the rest and digest. We all, I, I keep saying relax, but it's the rest and digest also. And so that can be hard when you first get in. It's like, oh! So again, it's like, I say the same thing in breath work. If you have a deep emotional release during breath work, that is the priority. Like you let that happen. That's part of what you're going for, right? When you get into the cold plunge, if, if, if you're getting, it, again, it's not about like pushing your experience away. It's about, oh, my knee, you know, whatever it is that's like, to, bringing attention or, oh, you know, for me, sometimes I'll do like my, my body, I start doing a shaking and I don't try to resist that. I try to really like lean into it and to just actually let myself have an experience of like, oh, wow, I'm feeling a lot of shaking in my body. And I'm also coming into a place of trust because I know this is going to end. I love setting a timer, two minute minimum, and then knowing I can always stay in longer. But again, the controlled environment is what also holds this really safe container. And I, I think that that is also one of these um, benefits of the experience that we don't always hear talked about so much is that like creating the relationship with your body of trust, creating the relationship where you get to step into like personal leadership, okay? Agency over what's happening. Uh, we can get so caught up with everything that's out of our control, right? But we are going into the known stressor of the cold, the ice, cold shower, um, cold ocean. Spas often do have a cold plunge situation. And I do find that with the cold plunge situation in the spas, it's nice because then you know there's a heated element on the other side. 
Um, and that's another thing that I know I kind of always thought of like, oh, I use it as a crutch. But like, I only want to do a cold plunge if, um, yeah, right, exactly, Kim. I only want to do the cold plunge if I'm going to have the heat afterwards. And like, you know, look, honoring that, it doesn't need to be a crutch or an excuse. It can just be, this is what works for me. And so now these days I use my infrared biomat at home. I'll do that after. When I'm at the hot spring, I like to go back and forth minimum of, I actually like to do it as many times as, until I can't remember how many times. Um, but that's something that I do recommend, especially if you're new, that's like set yourself up to have something really warm and cozy, whether it's a hot tub, a sauna, you can even take your towel, put it in the dryer so that when you get out, you have like a robe, warm robe or warm towel to put on. But this is what's also counterintuitive. When you get out of the cold, the body flushes your system with the circulation and the blood flow, and you actually feel warm. So it does not make sense, okay? But it feels amazing. And then also with the mood boosting benefits, that's something that I'm always going for. Is like, how can I feel good without using drugs, right? How can I feel good without trying to like hijack my system into something that I'm going to feel bad about later or have to, you know, make up for or um, compensate for later. So cold plunging, an amazing natural way to boost your, boost your endorphins, boost your immunity, boost um, all of these amazing benefits of connecting with the, the body embodiment and then also engaging that parasympathetic response. Okay, I think that we've covered everything. Um, one of the questions that I know people are always asking is like, how much ice to use? Well, it really does depend on your the size of your tub. You know, I, you can start off where you start off and you can always change it later. So that's another thing of like, don't get caught up in the excuses. If this is something that you wanna do, seek out answers. You know, obviously you can Google it, but I'm saying just let yourself have an experience and then go from there, okay? Because you get to be curious, you get to figure out what's gonna work for you. And um, the reality is that most people who try it do get kind of hooked, right? So like we find the things that work and then we want to do them over and over and over again. But it's also, I want to send in the reminder that people get really stuck on like, you have to do it, every, you have to do those cold showers every day. You know, you don't, you'll still find a benefit if you're doing it when it works for you. So this gets to be your practice. You know, you don't have to be overly disciplined about it. You do have to have an open mind. And then um, last reminder of, it's not a performance, it's not about proving something to anybody, it's not even about proving to yourself what your mind can handle, okay? I know that might be a surprise to hear, right? This is about having a new tool for regulation, a new tool to access resilience that you maybe have never felt before. You know, the body is such a powerful tool. If we give it permission, if we give our body a chance to show up for us, I mean, it's a freaking miracle. It's a miracle we're even alive. So I hope that something I said today was helpful for you. And um, if anybody wants help, I'm available. And then, um, beautiful, yes, Kaylin, we have a choice. And so this is, again, empowering you to, to say, I am going to be in a controlled stressor environment, and I'm gonna come out on the other side. And if you hate it, well, never do it again, okay? <laughs> So right now I am taking on new one-on-one -on -one clients. I'll just let you know about that and I'll put some information in the comments like I mentioned earlier. If anybody does want to sign up for one-on-one -on -one mentoring for my month-long session, I'm adding in um, just for the next couple days for you an extra three sessions that we can use for cold plunge. So that way you're getting seven sessions within a month. You're welcome, Kaylin. Thanks so much for having me. And again, just if anybody has questions, please reach out. Happy to help and I'll share some resources. Okay, have a great day. Bye.